Good evening and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Family Matters. My name is Purity Museo. Now COVID-19 restrictions has changed so much of people's aspects from weddings, vacations and so home actually people working from home and this has enabled them to pick uh, one or two characters which involve their change of lifestyle in terms of their eating habit when you talk about eating habit the times for the, e the the eating times and of course the quantity the amount and the quality of food that they ought to eat some people actually have not had enough because of the economic impact of COVID-19 but now how do we adjust or recover from whatever habits that we picked eating habits that we picked whether eating a lot or having little to put on your table on the show tonight we speak with Lucy Chege who is a nutritionist and she'll be telling us how do we recover from maybe you gained a lot of weight or you lost a lot of weight then let's have that conversation Lucy it's good to speak to you and we are speaking to you Lucy at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic has really changed people's behavior and we will not ignore the fact that even uh, the, the eating habits and the, the, the healthy lifestyles have also changed as well maybe from where you sit as an expert would you agree with me that people's behavior whether negatively or positively uh, has changed in terms of maintaining or uh, following the nutritional advice from experts like you yeah thank you for having me actually everything have changed from the food choices that we make some people have a lot well some people even don't have anything to put on their table so yes the eating habits our lifestyle has really changed has really changed so let's begin with um, a healthy lifestyle let's define a healthy lifestyle so that when we talk about unhealthy eating habits then we know what we are comparing the unhealthy lifestyles with so when you talk about healthy lifestyles these are the choices the positive choices that we make on what to eat what to do in order to prevent some of the preventable diseases, yes. And how do you tell that someone is living a healthy lifestyle? You see, in healthy lifestyle, it's wide. There is mental, mental health is part of the healthy lifestyle. So there is mental health. And maybe for us as nutritionists, we are more concerned. Maybe we are more visual. I can look at you and maybe judge you. Maybe you are, you are obese, you have a normal BMI, you are overweight. So sometimes it's visual. And but sometimes from what you tell me, like a conversation on what you've been eating, your food choices, it's a range of like your, your eating habits. Do we have some physical characteristics of uh, being able to distinguish someone who is eating healthy and unhealthy at the same time? Judging from your looks, I don't like judging people from their looks. Maybe after maybe doing my, my assessment, that's when I can be able to tell you. But looking at you and telling you that maybe you're not living a healthy lifestyle, that maybe will be mean on my side. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about now the unhealthy eating habits that as a nutritionist you've been able to pick and, and say this one. You can single out and say these ones is what we call unhealthy eating habits. Too much junk and the processed foods. From junk I mean the chipos, the candies, all those highly processed foods. That is one of the unhealthy eating habits that we have. Then we tend to concentrate more on carbohydrates. Like when you take your plate, potatoes, like let me, me, me give an example of a, of a plate, like half of your plate should be vegetables. Then we don't practice something I call the mindful eating. We just eat, let me say we just eat. Okay. The dangers of uh, practicing unhealthy eating, what does it mean? Uh, would it mean to your body, to your health? Tell us the dangers so that we know why we need to run away from the junk food lifestyle. For example, when you consume much salt and high sodium stuff, you're putting yourself at a risk of a range of cardiovascular diseases like hypertension. When there is high sodium concentration in your bloodstream, chances of you developing hypertension are very high. Then when you are taking uh, carbohydrates, and mostly we tend to take those that are highly refined, and they, they like occupy half of our plate, that means that you are at a higher risk of developing disease like diabetes. Because when there is too much sugar in your body, insulin it is a fat, it is a fat storing hormone. So the, the more glucose in your body will be stored in your body as fat. An ideal uh, lifestyle, an ideal healthy lifestyle, how is it like? 
Just eating right. Know your, know your, your portioning. Eat range of, be dive. Eat fruits and vegetables generously. Don't like eat them. They are very healthy, less in calories, but they are nutrient dense. Then things like maybe exercising, limiting the intake of processed foods, and all those refined. Stop. When you're telling me to eat right, what should be in my mind for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner? Because most people are like, uh, uh, most people skip breakfast because they're rushing somewhere and then eat heavily during lunchtime and, and, and in the evening. Like in the morning, you're supposed to, like your body has been starving like for the whole night. So I expect your plate to have a, to have a protein, to have a carbohydrate because you need energy to use during the day, and also the fruits and vegetables. That's an ideal way of starting your day. Have all that your body requires, the protein for the body building, carbohydrate to give you energy, and the vegetables and fruits. Where do you classify tea? <laughs> because most people have to take tea in the morning. I think tea is just a, like you're taking something to nourish yourself. So what should we have in big, large quantity and what should be minimized? Take us through that. Like the plate model, half of the plate should be occupied by the vegetables and fruits. That's why you get all the nutrients that your body requires. And you can't add weight. Some people are maybe afraid of adding more weight. You can't add weight on consuming more vegetables and fruits. They are less in calories, but nutrient dense. Then the, the other quarter should have the carbohydrates. And I mostly recommend the high fiber carbohydrates. These are the, like the brown brown rice, the brown ugali, the, the brown chapati, because they are higher in fiber. And the, the fiber in it will act as a buffer when it comes to, to glucose metabolism. Then the other quarter should be occupied by your protein, either animal source, these are the red, the meat, the chicken, the fish, or the plant-based like the lentils, the dengue, all those. Let's talk about why it's important uh, for anyone to consider, to put into consideration what they are eating in the evening before they retire to bed. After eating, take an hour or two before you sleep. Give your body that time for metabolism. It is, it is healthy. Don't just, and also it's very uncomfortable when you just eat and sleep. Yes, so give yourself like an hour or two before you sleep after eating. So uh, Lucy, when you, when, you talk, when you mentioned that this is what you're supposed to be eating, but there are people who uh, skip, they will either skip lunch, they will either skip breakfast and say I'll compensate during this time. Is that advisable? When you skip and say that you'll compensate, you find yourself eating more. So I don't see any reason why somebody you should skip any meal. Just eat right. Like I always say, mind your portion. You don't have to skip anything. And that brings me to the next question. The fact that the COVID-19 pandemic had so many people staying at home and working from home. So that means you have uh, less activities that you are doing. Uh, do you say that uh, eating habits should have changed at that level? And what is your advice? What should have been the ideal way of now uh, adapting to the new normal? So it's maybe a matter of maybe education, knowing what you, what you require and what your body also requires, yes, and how you spend the rest of your day. Yeah. You can be at, in the house but active. So let's uh, uh, now uh, put into consideration this category of people that they have been staying at home and of course chose the unhealthy lifestyles they are and now they are maybe having all these effects that you are talking about. Is there a way to undo the whole experience? Yeah, it's not too late. You can choose a healthy lifestyle. You can decide to, to maybe to check how you've been eating the, your plate model. And also, you've tried something of detoxification. That's a natural way that our body gets rid of the toxins in our body. You don't have to kill yourself with taking green tea. So Lucy, when you say that we don't have to use any unnatural ways of detoxifying our bodies, so is there, uh, what do we need to do to help our bodies now begin this process? And what are some of the, uh, do you want to say or to mean that when you begin now uh, adopting the unhealthy, uh, healthy lifestyle, then the body by itself will begin the detoxification process, or what exactly do you mean by that? It is start when you start taking care of these organs, like the kidney, like taking less salt or the sodium, drinking plenty of 
fluids, limiting your alcohol consumption. You see, like in alcohol, every time you like you consume alcohol, a liver cell is destroyed. And a liver cell is destroyed, of course, you're limiting its functions. So to take care of the of these organs, the kidneys, the liver, the skin, limit your alcohol consumption, limit the intake of of salt and sodium containing foods and such things. Mm -hmm. What exactly, what are some of the types of foods, maybe you can mention like, examples of them that um, constitutes uh, carbohydrates, proteins and fruits of course we know and vegetables we do, but as, at least for, for proteins and uh, carbohydrates. For carbohydrates I mean they are mostly known the whites. Yes, the, the normal rice that we take, the chapati, ugali, ndoma, ngwashe, all those are carbohydrates and they are the energy giving foods and they are the ones that contribute to the weight gain. People tend to confuse the, like gaining weight with proteins that have been consuming more protein, that's why I've been adding weight. But it's, weight gain is from the carbohydrates that we've been consuming because they are the ones that are giving the body more energy. The yeah, the pot all those, the potatoes, all those. Then protein, we have the plant-based proteins and we have the animal-based protein. The animal-based, like the red meat, the fish, chicken, all those. But try to limit the consumption of red meat. That if you must consume red meat, go for the lean. Don't go for the fatty, I know sometimes it's sweet, the fatty, the fatty meat, but that's why you get the saturated fats. These are fats that they raise the bad cholesterol in our body, putting us at higher risk of developing the cardiovascular diseases. Maybe the, the animal source protein you can consume maybe twice in a week, then the rest of the days try to consume the plant-based protein. These are the lentils, the njahe, dengu, all those. So you said carbohydrates, they give energy to your body. Yeah, How about the proteins? Proteins, they are the bodybuilding, yeah, build their muscles and to maintain our muscles. Yeah. The process of losing weight, there are people who go for the things that you mentioned, their natural way, but what is the natural way of losing weight? Is there any advice on that? It's a process. It can take even six months, a year, two years, just be slow and steady in the process. And the natural way of losing weight is the foods we eat. You don't have to go buy all the stuff that are in the market. Just observe the, the foods that you're eating. You can adopt a, a low-carbohydrate diet. When you eat a, a low-carbohydrate diet, the body starts burning the stored energy, the stored fat for energy. Yes. Then limit the fatty foods, the processed, eat whole meal foods. These are, like I said, the brown ugali, the rice. They have higher satiety. They have that higher satiety. They limit the number of times that you eat during the day. I got a point that if you want to lose weight, then you need to reduce your uh, intake of uh, carbohydrates. But there are people who want to gain weight. Yeah. So what do they need to check on? Maybe gaining weight, that's not that much common. Mm. But maybe the reason for losing like the excess weight, it could be due to you are eating less but exercising more. So you are tending to burn more than you consume, yes. So try to, as much as you are taking energy-giving foods, try to also to check your physical activity. You might be overdoing it, but in burning more, more calories in your body. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about eating disorders. There are people who would want to follow what, uh, what advice that nutritionists are giving, but they will not get any appetite of eating too much food as advised. Others will eat a lot, like it's not just their will to do this, but they cannot co help it, they are eating too much. So do we have these eating disorders and which ones are they? When it comes to eating disorders, it's more of a food addiction. One of it, it's called anorexia nervosa. These are people that they view themselves as overweight, even though they are severely, dangerously underweight. There is that intense fear of gaining weight. Like you're underweight, but you see yourself as overweight. So they tend, they can eat more or less. And after eating, they have these induction behaviors like purging. They can either take laxatives or diuretics. They can even induce vomiting because there's that fear of gaining weight. Then we have another category we call the bulim bulimia, bulimia nervosa. 
these are people that they eat a lot of food. Like in a short period of time, they can consume like a lot of food. Then after that, there is that pity. You pit, you just pity yourself. Now I've just eaten, I'll gain weight, I'm a bad person and such. Then we have another character, the binge eaters. These are the, I call it mindless eating. You just eat and eat and eat. Are you trying to say there's nothing like loss of appetite? It's just like a disorder, like someone thinks that I'm going to gain a lot of weight if I eat. Do we have anything like I don't have appetite or excess appetite for food? Yeah, there, there is loss of appetite, yes. but I can be able to tell maybe from a, from a, a history mm. of your food intake. I can be able to tell this someone is anorexic or it's just a loss of appetite. How can you help these categories of people that you mentioned, those that have disorders, genuinely disorders, and those that really do not have appetite or have too much appetite? How do you control that? It's like these eating disorders, they are mental. You just need to sit with someone, like tell them the dangers. Maybe for the anorexia nervosa, those people that have intense fear of gaining weight, just educ I just educate them on the dangers of being underweight. They like, could be susceptible to many diseases. So it's just a matter of talking to them and it's a, it's a journey. It's a journey, it, it can't just, it's not a one way thing. Uh, there are people who say that if you're not getting enough sleep, then you will end up losing your, your appetite. Do we have any relationship between healthy lifestyle and sleep? As you see, like in sleep, once you sleep, sleep like it regulates the hormones that are involved in, in hunger and satiety. When you sleep more, the, the hormone that is involved in appetite is suppressed. But when you tend maybe to spend most of the hours awake, the appetite hormone is much higher and you'll tend to eat more. So you'd find that those people that maybe in some, they have the issues with sleep, like the insomnia, they that weight gain in them. Yeah, of course, there is that relationship between sleep and health. And as an expert, do you advocate for any, because out here in the market there are a lot of products, some people saying that they are natural products of either gaining weight or losing weight. Do you maybe recommend any of them or you are for eat right, exercise? Yeah, I, I know them. Yes. I don't recommend any, just go the natural way. Because when you gained weight, you didn't go for those products. So just go to the drawing board, look for what you did wrong, then start losing weight the right way. The people who keep on posting their results, even on social media, saying, I took this after two weeks, then these are my results. Uh, for someone who's not started that habit, would you say they have any health impact uh, once used for long or after some time? Or why should you, or how do you convince someone to go a natural way which will take longer than this other person who is just using these uh, you know, items and in two weeks they are all looking nice? That magical, maybe losing yeah. weight journey. Yeah. Maybe whether it's a pill, it's a concussion you are taking, you're consuming it direct to your body. Mm -hmm. You'll end up maybe later in life you will end up having any toxin that you are taking. It must be eliminated either by your liver or your kidney. And when there is too much of these toxins, later in life you will have maybe problems with your kidneys, your liver. So you are not doing yourself justice by taking these unnatural ways of losing weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just go natural. Okay. I know you're not a policy maker, but um, um, let me ask you this question on during this COVID-19, of course, the economy has affected people negatively. And we've seen, uh, especially those living in slums and those not having a lot of income, their lifestyle has been disrupted, you know, especially those that are living in urban uh, setup. So they are going uh, for days without a meal. They are going or, or just a meal uh, in a day. How can these people be helped? And number, number two, maybe to help the policy makers understand the severity of this uh, change in lifestyle. What does it mean to their health? And of course, that means the physical health and the mental health. Of course, when there is that maybe lack of food, the deficiency, once people, maybe they, are, they lack food, of course, their productivity will be affected. And lower the productivity of the people, even the economy of the country will be affected. So maybe, maybe sharing, donations. If you have maybe, you don't have to have much for you to help. If you can afford maybe four, four plates of food, 
you can just give to, to that person that is struggling to put something on their table. So it's a matter of sharing and also donation to those people that are really need. Uh, two more questions as we wind up. Uh, because of lack of food, you find that most families will not be able to have uh, carbohydrate at the same time they have proteins and vegetables and fruits. So maybe in a week you will end up having or consuming only proteins or even only carbohydrates. What does th this mean? What is the danger of not having a balanced diet? One is deficiency. Maybe when you tend to take much carbohydrate, that which is very common, carbohydrates maybe they are cheaper compared to the proteins, that this condition that we call the protein energy malnutrition. You see the marasmas, the kwashioko in children. Because there is that deficiency disease that we'll find in people. Let's revisit the importance of healthy lifestyle. And this time round, maybe you can address uh, both for your body, for your mind, protection of diseases in general what is the importance what is the need for what does it mean for a nation to have a healthy eating lifestyle the importance of healthy eating lifestyle one you protect yourself from diseases mostly the non-communicable diseases these are the the cancer the diabetes and, and those the cardiovascular diseases and then you'll be fit once you are you having all the nutrients that your body requires you'll be fit even there is be there will be that higher productivity in, a, in, the, in the economy. And uh, when you're in the journey of losing weight, do you focus more on exercise? Because m people exercise a lot and when they come back, they eat just anything and say, I'm doing you know, some exercise. So what should be, what would you consider more they put emphasis on? Healthy lifestyle or exercise? Exercise contributes only 20% of the total weight loss. So it's 80% from the foods that you're consuming and 20% from the exercise that you're doing. So you can't do without. You must eat healthy, the, the right portioning, and you must also focus on the exercises for you to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you can leave us with, uh, we revisit the tips on healthy lifestyle, well, the do's and don'ts. Let's talk about the do's and don'ts and then we wind up. Eat less salt and sodium containing foods eat less of the saturated fats. These are the fats that you get from the, from the chipo, all those, the fatty meat. Drink plenty of water, practice mindful eating, and plan your meals in advance. This will, it will give you room for diversification and variety. Yeah. And maybe do you have, um, let's say, a website or on all those tips where someone, if they want to have a look at the tips, they can go and refer, especially on what you can eat. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Lucy Chege M, Twitter Lucy Chege M, and on my Facebook page, Lucy Chege. When you visit there, you'll have all those healthy tips. Okay, and that has been Lucy Chege, who is a nutritionist, of course, just talking about healthy lifestyle and why we should consider going back to our lifestyles because we all understand COVID-19 had disrupted our lifestyles and, of course, our eating habits. And now she says you can always go back to that lifestyle by eating right it's all about eating right there's no magic bullet to losing weight gaining weight just eat right and exercise little thank you so much once again my name is purity Museo. do enjoy the rest of our programming and god bless